My sidekick this week is writer and broadcaster Connor Tomlinson. And this week's nemesis is former Labour MP Dennis McShane. Uh, I'm plenty to discuss in this one, but I think I'm going to start with Dennis. Um, my thoughts on the CV are that it's plummeting from one scandal to the next. But it seems that in order to protect Christianity in this country, it's the faithful masses that need to come together, Dennis. Yes, you talked about the Church of England representing the universal, holy and apostolic church. Actually, the Church of England left the universal, holy and apostolic church in heresy 500 years ago. As a Catholic, oh, 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 okay. I can take you through the history. Okay. I, can, I can take you through the history. Look, the church, a, church, a poll of Church of England clerics... You know, excuse me. I actually, I'm quite impressed on Sundays, uh, at, and just driving around London, at the number of church congregations that are vibrant, lively, going out. There's a lot of external church activity now, running mission, uh, not missionaries, sorry, pilgrimages here inside the UK and, and, and to other sites. So I'm not particularly worried. Uh, I think... Uh, Christianity, faith of all sorts, plays an important role in, in British public life, uh, no, British life. Um, and um, just because, you know, a few wet and woolly vicars um, think it's, it's all going to hell in the handcart, is that the appropriate metaphor? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I'm not, I, I, I think long after I'm dead, there'll still be people going to church and the churches in different forms will still be active. OK, that's hopeful and positive. I do want to address your point that England did not leave the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Uh, England left communion with Rome. England is still a Christian country, and Anglicanism is not a new religion. It is still the Christian faith. It is the English expression of the Catholic faith, if anything. Um, Connor, let's not debate that one. <laughs> Christ England is no longer a Christian country, according to the priests within the Church of England. Yeah, it, it wouldn't shock me. It seems the pronouncement that Nietzsche, who I don't think we're big fans of, um, made years ago that without God, with civilization deracinated after his cultural death, that the great cathedrals of Europe will become mausoleums and sepulchres to a, good idea, uh, to a uh, dead ideal is rapidly becoming true because as much as Dennis has anecdotal experience saying that the congregations are still thriving in central London, there are many churches that aren't seeing as many people coming to not just Sunday Mass but Mass throughout the week. Mm -hmm. um, there are fewer people. Uh, uh, fortunately, though, among my generation, I think there's a minor resurgence, and that's just because of a cultural retaliation against the nihilism and the hedonism that the generations before us have passed on to us, and we're going, well, we prefer a bit more structure and direction, and actually it's a bit miserable just engaging in hookup culture and universities, mm. for example. But I don't think the church itself, and this goes for the Catholic Church as well, particularly its recent World Youth Day, where they house the communion wafers in Tupperware boxes, mm. things like that, that show they don't have a sense of the sacred. They're not going to attract people to their congregations if they're flying pride flags, which has the doctrine of God got it wrong, I think, abide by the gospel itself and not just whatever progressive zeitgeist is inhabiting your brain at the time. Yeah, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but you've mentioned the, the host in the tabernacle, mm. uh, sorry, in the Tupperware instead of the tabernacle. And I think this is part of a wider problem, isn't it, that there is a lack of reverence. Now, if you truly believe that God is present in that place, you would be the most reverential you possibly could towards that place and towards that host. It's part of the and culture of, of arrogance that we're seeing in that we can't have anything that is sacred and obscured because obscurity reminds us that we are not the masters of the world. Instead, because we've de culture, we suddenly have this Promethean ambition to remake the environment and even turning it inwards into ourselves with, with the gospel of, of trans identity. So those are incompatible perspectives to the church. And to return to the sacred, a little bit of proximate distance to the highest ideal, is very healthy for a very egocentric culture. Do you go to the Latin Mass? No, there's not one around me. But I have a, also, there's, even though our design in, in the church is a bit VAT too, um, our, my priest watches this show, so I okay. couldn't, give that, couldn't give that service up. Good man. <laughs> I, do think, I do think the nervous order is part of the problem. Not the problem, but a symptom of the wider problem mm. and that lack of reverence that we talked about and lack of sacred. Um, Dennis. Intro Ivo ad Altari Dei. That is how the Mass started when I was an altar boy and all those years spent on my knees and now giving my knees quite a bit of jib. Now, we can continue in Latin if you find it helpful. You're, uh, you're a multicultural man, Calvin, <laughs> and Con Connor's fantastic. very educated. But under Tupperware, for heaven's sake, there were nearly two million young people came to hear the Pope's message. Mm. Uh, and of course, you can't distribute the, the host well, in, the classic, world, in, in the classic Way where you still be distributing now in, 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 in Portugal. And that's just a small example 
of where I think your thesis breaks down that, as I say, these, I don't know whether they started about 20 years ago, uh, these Catholic World Youth Days are attracting enormous crowds. Uh, so I think there's, there's, there's a lot out there for uh, discussion. I mean, King Charles told us he, he had to be the king of all the faiths. I don't which, quite, which is wrong, isn't it? Well, yeah. I don't quite know what that meant. Well, he, he did actually, in the coronation oath, said he was to uphold the supremacy of the Protestant religion, mm. not the Christian religion, just also one, one sect, one sect, or one church, and all over Ireland people fell off their bars, drank their Guinness and burst out laughing. Uh, more English Anglican supremacy. So I'm just, I just gently tried to steer it away a little bit from one self-selecting survey. I mean, right now, they, they used to say the Anglican Church is a Tory party at prayer. Mm. The Labour Party has become very, very conservative in recent years. So it's yeah. probably now the Labour Party at prayer. Uh, and they will feel at home with, with a very cautious, respectful, conservative, don't rock the boat, avoid anything very dramatic, mm. Labour leadership at the moment. The problem I have with the actual survey question is that they sent out 5,000 uh, emails, 1,200 were answered. So that suggests straight away that actual Orthodox priests were busy in their parishes doing priestly ministry. And the keyboard warriors were the ones that were quick to respond with the woke suggestions. But even if that is the case, a, a majority of the 1,200 that did reply wanted to promote heresy. How do we have that many heretical priests within our, within our state church? Well, I'm not an expert on Anglican, um, the Articles of Faith. Karl Marx said that the Anglican Church would rather give up 38 of its 39 articles and one thirty-ninth of its wealth and income. And so that just was a cynical statement from over 100 years ago. On these polls, can I tell you a story? It's slightly offbeat, yeah. but it's relevant. When I was working in the Foreign Office with Robin Cook, he's a brand new minister, and his marriage bust up, OK? And the son splashed, you know, the ugliest kind of garden gnome picture of Robin Cook imaginable and said, would you sleep with this man? Answer yes or no. And the order went out throughout the Foreign Office, everybody get off whatever you're doing, saving the world, invading a country, start <laughs> pressing the yes button. So I, I have to say 1,200 yeah, but, buttons punched on a, on a poll. It's not that serious. OK. Connor, do you think the poll is part of the problem? Is this part of the, the progressives using it to promote their heretical ways and say, look, clearly there's, there's a, an appetite here for changing the church's views on same-sex marriage and on sex outside of marriage and on women's ordinations and, and such issues? And we can often see the polls are used to manufacture concern. Also, the church, in, in, to, to the credit of still some ministers in the upper echelons, have said, yeah, the government have been pressuring us to officially recognise this, even though some of us still don't want to. So there are multiple factors influencing this. But I'm glad that Dennis actually raised Karl Marx, because in, <laughs> in the opening when Dennis said that actually the gospel is really progressive, um, no, lots of modern progressive doctrines are a form of neo-Marxism, yet they, they came from the fertile soil of hands-off liberalism, where it's just, oh, you can do whatever you want as long as you're not harming anyone, except lots of the time you're harming yourself. But mm -hmm. that took root in that soil, yes. and, and Marxism itself was set up in diametric opposition to Christianity. Marx said he wanted to revolve around himself as his own true son in a very satanic fashion. He wrote satanic poetry. He inverted the parable of the talents to get his maxim from each according to his ability to each according to his own need. Frederick Engels even had to discourage him from calling the Communist Manifesto the Catechism of Communism. So he directly hated Christianity as the bulwark against materialistic managerialism. Mm. And so fundamentally, progressivism, born of Marxism, incompatible with Christianity mm. and any church that preaches it, is preaching the gospel of the Antichrist. Well, the Catholic Church used to say that the, the communism is antithetical to the faith and it was impossible to be a communist and, and now, a Christian. And now you, Francis. Have a, now you have a communist pope, so yes. you've gone a long way. But I do like what you said about the argument that people often use, that, oh, he's not harming anyone. That whole argument is, it doesn't work because... You're harming your soul. You're harming yourself, even if you're not harming anyone else around you. And if you universalise that perspective, if everyone is just an atomised individual consumer with no consideration for his fellow countrymen, guess what? Nobody noticed why your civilization is collapsing around you. That's yes. why I joined a trade union. I didn't want to be an atomised individual. I wanted to work with others. But it's the American Constitution mm. which says, Article 1, Article 2, there shall be no established re religion. And it was the French Revolution that also got rid of all roles for the churches, and the churches in France never flourished more. 
You so think? perhaps uh, this That's will not what be I'm a wake. At the moment, though, Dennis. Uh, what? That's not what I'm seeing at the moment in France. Oh yes, in France. I mean, in, in France, there are lots of different faiths. Uh, uh, yeah, one's often burning, the other one's churches. Mm. Well, uh, yes, there, there's a lot of ugly religiosity about, uh, stirred up by people who perhaps should think through a little bit before they open their mouths. But in France, I would. My rough experience, I go to France quite a lot, I speak the language well, I live there a long time, that there'll be more people going to mass and churches on a Sunday than there are in England. Well, that's good news. Let's end on some Latin. In nomine Patriot, filiae et spiritus sancti.